Therefore, encourage one another with these words, says the Apostle Paul at the end of chapter 4. I'm going to work, start at the end here and kind of work our way forward, but Paul makes a point and points out something that we need to understand. He says, therefore, encourage one another with these words. And there's a good reason why he said this. Because we need to be encouraged from time to time, and that's what this is all about today. It's for our encouragement, because the apostle to the Gentiles is delivering to us, to you and to me, some tremendously good news, and good news that transcends our wildest imagination we could possibly have in this life. This morning, I'm asking you to let yourself soar above your deepest anxieties and cares and concerns that you have in this life and to consider this in the face of what the ultimate fear is of humanity. Now last week we had All Saints Day. It was Totem Fest observed on All Saints Day. And we read the list of names. And we were again reminded of something called mortality. You know, when you think about it, probably 99% of the stuff that you and I do is geared towards avoiding death. Drinking water, this is unsweetened tea, by the way, my throat. <laughs> Drinking, it is, you can test it later. <laughs> Drinking water or unsweet tea, I'm a Yankee, it has to be unsweet, or eating food, what's, what do we, why do we do that stuff? To avoid death. It's also why we wear clothes. It's why we seek shelter in an apartment or a house. If you think about it, all this basic stuff that you and I do all the time, it's meant for one thing at its deepest level, we're trying to avoid death. It's also why we seek and crave the companionship of family and the commonality of community, whether it's in the church or it's in our neighborhood. Because without those kinds of relationships, our soul begins to die, and with it, our body. But yet, as much as we endeavor to avoid it, sooner or later, we know that death catches up with us. And it is then that we are reminded that we have not managed to avoid it. We have only managed to delay it. We have managed to live for a while, but only for a while. This morning, I offer you a proposition to think about. It's kind of wild, but I just ask you to take this and kind of spin it around in your head for a little while. Did you know that you were not created to die? You weren't. Neither was I. Death is an unnatural act. You were not created to grow old. You were not created to get sick. That wasn't part of God's original order and God's original plan in Genesis. We also were not created to destroy one another, enslave one another, oppress one another, do all these nasty things that, that people do to each other and have been ever since, ever since Cain picked up that rock and did it his brother Abel. That wasn't part of God's plan. The curse of Adam, going back to Genesis, is what brought all that bad stuff in and set the cosmos out of order. And God provided a cure for that in Christ. And that's what this passage today is all about. That's what Paul wants us to encourage one another with. Look at it again. There's a reason why it's in the bulletin. It's something about reading it for yourself. Paul says, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died. Now, I've been to a ton of funerals, and so have you. 
And he's saying, we don't want you to be uninformed about those who have died. So that what? So that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. You see a reunion unfolding there? God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, this is the last day, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. And Paul finishes by saying, therefore, encourage one another with these words. The great promise of the Christian gospel is that all of this bad stuff that you and I are seeing and experiencing now, it's going to be reversed. At the last day, death and aging and sickness and all this rotten other stuff, it's going to be eradicated once and for all. There's a lot to unpack from this passage alone, and we don't have time, so I'm trying to sum it up for us. And the summary is this. Life wins, death loses. How does that sound to you? Life wins, death loses, and that means you win too. You win in Christ, because Christ himself is victorious over death. There are not a whole lot of guarantees in life other than what I've just mentioned, and then April 15th. There are so many things that hang in the balance. But in the Christian gospel, the God who created you and created me promises something. In the gospel, we have the promise of something that transcends our mortality. It triumphs over our tragedy, and it puts to rest our deepest fears. Paul says, the dead in Christ will rise first, and whoever is alive will join them and will be with the Lord forever. It's called the kingdom of heaven. I remember when I first started in the ministry, right out of, right out of seminary, there were a few people who offered me some unsolicited advice. One of them was my own father. There were, there were just some others. I remember they said to me, they said, David, don't be so heavenly conscious that you're of no earthly good. They had a point. But you know what? I think in the church, I think that we've taken that just a little bit too far. I really think we could do with a little bit more heaven. These days, and probably most churches, we've become so focused and so good at being good on earth that we've lost sight of heaven. There was a battle in military history, several hundred years actually BC. The, there was a, a battle between the Greek army and the Persian army on the plains of Marathon, about 27 miles from the Greek capital of Athens. Now the Greeks were numerically inferior to the Persians. I mean, they were outnumbered big time. But the Greeks were very innovative in terms of military technology, in terms also of tactics, not to mention their, their basic gear and weapons. And the Greeks took the Persians and handed their you-know-what back to them in several pieces. They defeated them tactically on the battlefield. But 27 miles away, in Athens, the Greek Senate was convening, and the Senate fully expected that the Persians were going to overwhelm them, the Greeks, and so they were starting to draft actually a treaty, a peace treaty, that would be more or less a treaty of appeasement. And the battlefield commanders of the Greek army, they knew this, and they said, somebody has to stop the Senate from 
signing that awful treaty that's going to that's going to ruin our country. Somebody needs to go back and tell them. So they sent a young man running back in full battle gear, running the 27 miles back to Athens. And again, this is where our term marathon comes from, running a marathon. This is the battle of marathon. And he's, he's running for all he's worth, and he makes it in the nick of time, but of course, running that 27 mile stem at the speed that he was, he was out of breath when he got there. And when he got there and stood in front of the Senate of Greece, he was only able with enough, just enough wind to get out one word. And that word he got out was this, victory. Victory. I'm almost out of breath this morning too, and so there's one word that I utter to you as a fellow citizen of heaven. Victory. Victory. Namely, victory over death. In Christ, we are assured of that. The battles of this life are real. We probably are going to have more of them between now and whenever. But Christ is still risen from the dead. Heaven still awaits. The discouragement of life is all around us, but it is the Lord of life who holds ultimate power over life. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we shall meet them and will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen.